Okay, look, first off, I do have to apologize. This video was long overdue, trust me, I know. I've been kind of busy lately professionally as I snagged a very nice promotion, but over time, I'm sure I'll adjust. But guys, I'm very excited for this one. This is a video topic I'm asked just about every single day in my DMs, and for good reason. I mean, buying a MacBook is already a laborious process, it seems like. There's just so much to consider, and I mean, after tax, you're definitely spending over a thousand dollars so yeah you better do your research but it's also like apple has this culture of bougie because there are some people that buy fully spec 16 inch macbook pros i kid you not to only browse facebook and watch hulu like bro if you got it like that number one slide me a macbook for the free please but two it's sad but true some people spend their money blindly because they just don't do their research that's the purpose of these videos, for you guys to be informed. I have a whole playlist on MacBook comparisons with different configurations. That way you guys can get a better idea of what you're actually buying. But today, we got Apple's two cheapest offerings put up against each other. The base MacBook Air versus the base 13-inch MacBook Pro. Which one is going to edge out and get better performance? I think it's safe to say the Pro is, but by how big of margins? Well, let's go ahead and get these tests underway. Okay, first off, chances are if you're watching this, you're already pretty well versed with tech terminology and upgrades and whatnot, but there are those that are tech illiterate and that's okay. That's why instead of wasting a couple of minutes running down the specs, I'll just throw them up on the screen right now. Feel free to pause and screenshot if you need to, but the big thing here is that honestly, none of these specs are what I'd consider impressive. Don't get me wrong, they're more than capable for your everyday tasks like email and stuff, but I'm just going to be up front and say if you're going to take your hobby or job seriously these are probably not for you you'll definitely want to invest in a mid for usb-c macbook pro configuration or if you're really about it hit up the 16 inch for the true power but what if you occasionally need some power maybe once in a blue moon what if you have a short two minute clip to do light edits on and simply just prefer the portability of a macbook air or 13 inch macbook pro in that case which is the go-to well let's hop right in and go over some geekbench scores so geekbench is like the holy grail of benchmarking it gives you a rough idea of gauging the true potential of each machine and it tests both for singular core usage and also how well each machine manages multi-threaded apps applications. For the entry air, we get a single core score of 938, and ironically, the base pro scored just 7 points higher, coming in at a score of 945. Where we really begin to notice differences is on the multi-core side. The big difference in score here is most likely due to the air having a dual core architecture, while the base pro runs off a quad core design. The entry air comes in with a multi-core score of 2066, but the base pro edges out by a good margin, nearly doubling the score coming in at 3,987. But we do have to do more testing because this doesn't get the entire picture. Up next, we turn to good old Cinebench. I really like Cinebench because it really puts every core to work. It's like a race to see which computer can render out this ugly picture. So most would be quick to assume that the pro with the four cores would edge out, and those people would most definitely be right. But there's more to it. You see, towards the end of the video, I'll go deeper into thermal testing testing with basic web browsing but basically the air has that thinner chassis which makes it overheat a lot easier and thus thermal throttle and hinder performance the pro for the most part doesn't have this issue and honestly neither does this entry air all that much the real issue is with the i5 upgrade as it heats up more than it should on the macbook airline i have a whole video on that optional hundred dollar i5 upgrade click the card at the top right to check that one out but anyway needless to say Say, I thought the air was gonna burn right through the desk. It got real hot. The pro came in with a decent score of 1536, with the air coming in much later with a score of 589. Convinced already? Is the $300 difference in price worth it? Keep watching. 
We then basically test out the gaming aspect to a computer using Unigen's Heaven and Valley benchmarks. We first start with Heaven and notice that the air is dropping hella frames like bro are you good there? Looks like you're struggling a little bit. But long story short for this test, yep, you guessed it, the pro did so much better, but the pro didn't come in with what I would exactly call good results. The average frame rate for the air was a pitiful 16.7 FPS, while the entry pro did do much better coming in with 26.7, but I mean come on, do you want a game at 26 frames per second? Didn't think so. Score wise, the air got a 421 and the entry pro hit that hard flex with a 672. Over on the valley side we see similar scores, the air having atrocious results while the entry pro having lukewarm numbers. At an average of 14.8 on the air and 23.7 on the entry pro, yeah let's just say please don't game on these bro. If you try and are serious about gaming then I'd highly recommend an eGPU, but that obviously brings up the already expensive price to buy a stinking MacBook in the first place. Then we go over to the blender test which is this really in-depth behind the scenes test that tests just about everything from what I've heard. It can be lengthy though, so I most definitely use this time to run to Duncan and get my usual and pick up some Chinese food cause a tech reviewer gotta eat man. But yeah, to no one's surprise, the entry pro fared way better here as it finished the test in 42 minutes and 13 seconds. Keep in mind this is actually a pretty bad time. The high end 16 inch MacBook Pros can sometimes finish this test in well under 20 minutes. And of course, the snooze fest air finished with a time of one hour 43 minutes and 33 seconds super long i know i thought covid was gonna be over by the time this finished let me just break real quick from testing performance and test our ssd speeds macbooks and apple in general have always been known to have very fast and reliable ssds or storage in their machines it's just how apple rolls but in this case both are really speedy and these numbers really are right at about the same in real life you'll honestly be getting similar results maybe every now and then a few seconds faster on the process it is technically scoring slightly higher but yeah rest assured apple's ssds are almost always top tier okay back to a few more tests we now look deeper at the graphics potential of each machine the 16 inch pros have a dedicated graphics card while both of these here have integrated graphics cards meaning they're inferior to the beefier 16 inch dedicated graphics cards. So for serious 3D rendering or graphically intensive games, you'd be better off going with the 16 inch Pro and upgrade to that brand new 5600M option that I do plan to review real soon, so stay tuned. So we hit up the good old GFX metal benchmarking test to see how good these integrated graphics cards really are. The truth? The air ain't it for graphics, I'm sorry, I can't lie, there's no way I can sauce it up, just look at these terrible scores. Even the base pro has barely passable frame rates, but man, the air will just drop frames left and right on anything moderately intensive. And then finally, we get to video and photo editing, and for this, I did simple light edits on both machines and used the exact same compressor settings to export both of these 4K 30fps short edited clips. The base pro did pull ahead by sizable margins exporting the short video in 14 minutes and 34 seconds, while the base air took a grueling 21 minutes and 31 seconds to export. And for my photographers, I didn't forget about you, I did a quick little 100 picture light edit export, and the differences were minor with the base pro exporting all 100 images in about 52 seconds, while the air lagged behind slightly at 58 seconds. Okay, now that was a lot, and it's pretty obvious that the 300 extra dollars you would spend on a base pro do correlate with modest improvements to performance, but it's also important to take into account thermal throttling. So basically when these processors are working overload, the fans inside these systems crank up to literally cool off the hardware. It can get pretty hot, especially in that aluminum design. Because the air has a thinner chassis, it makes heat dissipation a bigger issue as compared to the base pro, which has more room inside to dissipate the heat a little better. And the thing is, the air generation garnered a bit of controversy with the i5 since people noticed it was overheating for no reason. Like damn man, I just 
just opened up Google Chrome and you already at 70 degrees? But anyway, this is the dual core i3 inside the air and the base pro has a quad core i5. And I am pleased to inform you that the i3 is leagues better in terms of thermal throttling as opposed to the i5 in the 2020 air. So you can see here that I started them at idle. So these are as cool as they can be to begin with. Then I started up with a simple Safari tab. And we just keep adding, eventually opening up maps. And I think I even started streaming regular show. And we still haven't reached our max temperature. The air didn't hit 100 degrees until I began to export a video while having everything else play in the background simultaneously. I then basically did the exact same experiment as before, only substituting Chrome for Safari. And when using Chrome, I did notice that it did run a bit hotter, but again, within reason. Sure, the air could be better as when using Chrome, it averaged out being around 10 degrees hotter. You definitely won't have any issues when browsing the internet though. I'd even say you're okay with opening up 15 plus tabs on any browser on either of these machines. So for thermal throttling, the Base Pro gets the one and only stamp of approval with an A- and it'll give the Air with the i3 a solid B. It's not terrible but does run hotter than the Pro. And there you have it guys, just like that. So basically to summarize everything, the Base Pro does see modest improvements over the Air, but is it worth the $300? That is going to be completely subjective to you and your needs most people I assume would be quick to go for the base air just because it's the cheapest but do your research you definitely get that extra horsepower that definitely differentiates it as its own category while I would still argue the entry pro is far from pro it does a lot of things right it's still lightweight and portable but packs in extra power under the hood for those who may occasionally need it so at the end of the day weigh out your needs and workload and make a decision Either way, whichever machine you get is perfectly fine for handling the usual tasks. You know what I mean, Instagram, YouTube, streaming Hulu and Netflix, all of that jazz. The Pro just has that extra sauce that allows creators to take their work to the next level. Stay tuned because up next we compare this same entry Pro to the 4 USB Pro with the new 10th gen chips that this base Pro does not have. Subscribe for more content guys, give this video a thumbs up and I'll catch you all in my next video. Peace out.